everybody. Welcome back to the Mad Max podcast. I'm here with Miguel, and today we're going to be talking about 1999's The Mummy with Brandon Fraser and Rachel Weisz. Not the one with Tom Cruise. It's very, very important to make that sort Ugh, of a... Never the one about Tom Cruise. That's a different frustrating conversation. But yeah, this is one from 99. Yeah, so with Corona being around, we've been kind of going through our movie collection and been really wanting to revisit The Mummy. That's been one of my favorite movies to rewatch but i haven't seen it in years and so miguel and i were going through our collection and i'm like oh we're gonna watch the mummy and we watched it and then we started talking about you know does this movie still slap does it still slap yeah in what context do we think that this movie still slaps so we're it this might be a new series we're thinking about other other movies to, to revisit to yeah. revisit and you know Ask, keep this going slap? yeah so Revisit some of our favorites from from back in the day. At least, probably like what ten years ago. You know, now that I'm old, I'm in my mid thirties, I'm wondering how many people um, younger than me haven't seen this movie. Because for our generation, we grew up watching it. Oh it yeah. Came out when I was thirteen, fourteen. Mm-hmm. It was it was ninety nine. Okay, so I was fourteen. And man, we saw this movie like three times in the theater that year. You know, and then when it came out on VHS, we watched it all the time. Yeah. So we grew up watching it, but it saddens me to think that there's people like, you know, the Zoomers who have, don't know this movie exists. I mean, maybe. We're it's, we're just making that assumption. This is a modern... When you look it up nowadays, one of the first things you see is it's a modern classic. Yeah. It's... it's just, you don't hear that too much about remakes, though. Yeah, it, it's... it's I don't know. The movie's just... It, the movie's so much fun to rewatch. Like, it just... It takes me back to a kid watching it. Mm-hmm. It's like a probably like a comedy horror type of thing which is it's it's an adventure movie is what it is you know yeah and you know one of the early criticisms we heard about this movie is is, uh the critics would say well it can't decide what it wants to be it can't decide if it wants to be a horror or a comedy i think it found a great balance um because it it was an adventure movie that's what i thought about it because it was smart enough not to take itself too seriously um with like and so with Brendan Fraser as being the lead is it's so perfect. Oh, perfect casting for that, I think. He's he he walks that he's able to walk that that balance of especially in this movie of, you know, being an action hero but still being able to land those jokes even though they're super corny. They're so there's such a 90s thing <clears throat> to like say some corny ass fucking jokes, yeah. but man, it it was gold. And he's able to like do it without being corny. Like we're, he, it's still very likable. Yeah, it's it's a really good balance of shtick. This movie pays a lot of tributes to um, Indiana Jones mm-hmm. with the tone of it and the comedic tone. Because Indiana Jones, the first one, and the te- um, not the Temple of Doom, no, Raiders, Raiders, of, Raiders, Raiders of the Lost, of the Lost Ark. Ark had that scene which haunted a whole generation of the Nazis melting at the end. Mm-hmm. It was a bloody, gross scene. But the movie as a whole was a really smart, fun, funny adventure film. The whole series was. And I think that the director of this movie, he, he I feel like we can trust this guy who grew up watching those movies and appreciating that type of adventure film. Yeah, the director was uh, uh, Stephen Summers. Stephen Summers. Uh, he did the second one. I don't know what he did after this. He, this he was he, he was a producer on the third one, too, whenever it came out. Um, but he did uh, Van Helsing. Um, well, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I mean. God, I was so mad about that movie. He did uh, Deep Rising. Uh, yeah, that's all right. You know, a year before, um, a year before this one, he did G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, the the Scorpion King movie. <laughs> the one with The Rock, the spinoff? Well, yeah. The, the, I mean, that's, yeah. All right. You got your check for that one. You know, I'm going to. Hey, I mean, I watched that movie, too. Like, that was just. Man, I started watching. That was just a shit. I knew it was bad, but it was still a fun bad to watch. I didn't even watch it, man. Anyways, but yeah, so. So, uh, Brandon Fraser, Rachel Wise, John Hanna. Kids today will never know that Brandon Fraser for a minute was a sex symbol. Like, oh man, why you gotta be that? Come, George just, of the Jungle. Well, yeah, I mean, like from from like Encino Man to like the mu- the third Mummy, he was. He had his he had his period. Yeah. Of being a sex symbol. Now he's he slipped back and he he retired for a little bit. Now he's gone back. He's going back into it and doing stuff like Fargo. But when this movie came out, man, he was like the A list star. Mm-hmm. And Rachel Weiss, her career was set on fire with this film. I don't think anyone yeah. knew who she was before this. Yeah, she did one movie, which is why the director really wanted her for uh, the role of Evie. 
Um, oh, I can't remember so what the name of the movie was, but yeah, I mean, like, like you said, like I didn't know who she was. Whenever I watched, no the movie. one did. The whole world fell in love with Rachel yeah. Weisz when this came out. People were like, "Who is this?" Yeah, she was, she was charming. She was sweet. She I was mean, funny. Yeah, she was, she was a damsel, but I mean, she was fiery and like it was. It, she she played it really well. She played it was her, fun. Her character was so important because she wasn't just a damsel in distress. Like in the beginning of the first act of the movie, uh, when they're going on the excav- excavation. One of the guys says, do they know something we don't? And the professor goes, they are led by a woman. What does a woman know? Well, like, she's talking about Benbridge Collars and yeah, she talks about the book of Amun-Ra. She's brilliant. And that's one thing we, we find this character so endearing is that she's not a damsel in distress. She's the one leading these guys because she's the smartest one of the bunch. Right. Uh, like this is way before Hermione, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> before Hermione, we had uh, Evie. Evie, man. Evie was the shit. Evelyn. And her brother, too. Uh, comic relief, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, played by John Hanna. Yeah, mm-hmm. that a character that like that can be easily so obnoxious, and you just want him off the screen. Now, he was funny. Yeah, he was funny. He was endearing. I mean, you he kind of got on your nerves a little bit, but I mean, he he was really just another part, like another element of that comic relief. It was like such a perfect. The... Di- we were watching. We talked mm-hmm. about this. That dynamic between all the characters was so good. Yeah, it seemed really authentic. Like really they just did. had like a they just had a good time being on set, you know, just the you, chemistry. Talking, yeah, talking crap to each other. Yeah. Like got, you know, that whole feeling that they had throughout the whole film. They, I mean, they all gave each other shit in the movie. Yeah. And it just feels like they actually, you know, had that kind of camaraderie off the set too. The villain in this movie, besides um the mummy himself, was uh Benny. Benny was a oh, funny villain. Yeah. Uh, played by the great uh what? Kevin J. O'Connor. Kevin J. O'Connor is a chameleon, man. I've seen him play all sorts of ethnicities, all sorts of ages, all sorts of type of characters. Before he did this, he did Lord of Illusions. Looked and sounded completely different in that film. So he's a, he's a really underrated character actor. But even even the villain had some dimension to him, and he was funny. Yeah, you know, um, Arnold Voslu Voslu. I probably did not pronounce that correctly. Which one's Arnold Voslu? He played the mummy. Oh, oh, that's right, the main guy. Yeah. The mummy. He had a great presence on screen. Oh yeah, he, mean, was... he was. So go ahead, you can say it. he was kind of hot. No, no, <laughs> I'm not. I wasn't thinking that at all. Like he, he. Oh, had, I guess. I mean, he he had a he had a very good on screen presence, and you believe <clears throat> that he was powerful and um oh, yeah. and he was very intimidating he was intimidating when i was a kid so. we watched him on screen we were like whenever he first got his face back we were like oh shit yeah, yeah that's what we said in the theater well and let's let's talk about cgi for a minute because cgi wasn't terrible at all for the you know, time you know what's funny is that that's why people made fun of the second one harder because to this day people make fun of the cgi on the scorpion king uh, at the end, when no, the rock the, comes it, out, the mummy returns. The mummy yeah. returns. Yeah, yeah, talk yeah, about no. the scorpion king. Yeah. Well, the character of the scorpion king on the sequel to the mummy, which is the mummy returns, when he came out, even as a kid, we're like, "What the hell is that?" Mm-hmm. Because the, the mummy, the CGI in the first mummy was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it wasn't over. I mean, you had to have some CGI, of course, uh, for the, uh, the mummy army coming back at the end, whenever they're about to bring back or try to bring back Anaximum, or like the sand scenes. Yeah, the sand scenes, the huge great. sand wall, and every time that the um, the scene where you know um, Rick O'Connor shows the mummy the cat and he disintegrates into he sand, screams, and turns gets, into sin. Yeah, and, and leaves out the window. I mean, it was it, it didn't look like something that they inserted in. You know, yeah, it, they did a really good job. A the, special effect, you know. Yeah, well, it was one thing, good. One thing I love about this movie is that the environmental feel of this film still slaps. I mean, you, you, it, the, some I of the, lo- I love that term. It just, still slaps because it freaking does, yeah. man. Like, there's some movies that I was frustrated by as a kid because it felt like a giant set piece. The most biggest example I can think of that was Batman Returns. The mm-hmm. second Batman felt like one big set piece. It felt fake. It didn't feel real. This it probably was. I think it was. I think they filmed it in a huge lot because it felt the way it just still felt fake the whole time. But this movie, you feel like we're in Egypt. I mean, it does such a good job of taking the audience out of their seat and bringing this living, breathing world. And you really feel like you're in Egypt the whole time. Yeah. hundred um, percent. They do that so well. Yeah, it was it. That movie, it, it was just fun to watch. It was fun to like even just like the background scenes, like the background of the pyramids whenever they're in Cairo and they're yeah. all. Like the mummies are already back and they're coming after the American guys, which were so funny. 
how they were portrayed. Like they were portrayed. Yanks. <laughs> well, no, not even arrogant Yanks. Like, well, one of them probably was an arrogant Yank, but they all looked like they were. To me, they seemed like they were from Texas because they're just like, you yeah, know, they were. While they're on the boat, you know, they're just having a good old gunfight, drinking, and they're, playing cards. They were living it up that whole. Uh, whenever they were getting attacked by the Magi on the boat, and they're just like, they're like, oh, crazy Americans. Yeah, you know? Jonathan goes Americans. Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> they were, that was they were all fun too like that was another it just nobody was really wasted in this movie yeah to me there's so. there's seen there's movies that you watch and they do archetypes in a really really bad cringy way this mm-hmm. movie does it great yeah you know it does it like the like the classic films you'd watch the old universal uh movies the swashbuckling mm-hmm. movies but it's okay because they do it in such a way that's self-aware and it's, it's funny and smart yeah um there are as and now that i'm not 13 or 14 watching it and i'm 35 I see some of its faults more like the scene where uh, he approaches the old guy in the third act for help to go fly them into the uh, to go fight the mummy at the end to save yeah. Evie. That didn't need to happen. They, oh, there was yeah, no, no way they couldn't buy more camels. But they were like, man, how do they how do we approach? It, it has to be a fun way. OK, we're going to shoehorn this old guy in who's kind of crazy old coot that's going to fly him in on a plane. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. That scene's badass because you see Brendan Fraser shoot the machine gun into that wall of a face. Oh, yeah. That's such a memorable badass scene. I remember a whole family watching that going, whoa. I know. Well, I remember it in the trailer and I was like, dang, I it's, wonder how they did that. It's you such know? a badass scene. I mean, it's almost like the equivalent to um, the newest Mad Max Fury Road whenever they go into uh, the dust storm. Yeah. And it's like that to me is like the equivalent to that back then yeah it was because it, you were taken aback by how awesome it was yeah so i mean it was shoehorned in the it w- absolutely was but it was fun as hell to watch so you yeah. can't be too mad at it yeah one of the things that i have written down is like memorable scenes and that was one of my memorable scenes yep. and talking about uh i, I brought down dust mummy dust mummy <laughs> whatever <laughs> <laughs> whenever he would disintegrate after seeing the cat you know because cats were seen as gods yeah. in egypt i mean they still think they're gods now so <laughs> yeah our cats are jerks yeah i'm surprised they're not attacking us but anyway <laughs> um and then um the opening scene you know that whole the thing fight? the fight oh you mean whenever we first meet them i mean they tell his story yeah That's and, and, and it knocks Manu in, and i mean it oh um, the scale of it all was yeah. really big back in the day like in 1999 like that was a big deal the scale of everything that they did for I, sure i for years thought that they might have they might have filmed this in egypt that's how believable it was but they filmed it in morocco you told me yes but God, i mean did they do a good job you sand know, i mean but it felt like egypt right you know it's it i don't know it's really cool they they did a great job yeah they did it all man. together the director of this does, deserves mad credit for this there's other movies before and after this film God, years later that are set in, in egypt that i've watched that feel really fake mm-hmm. like you guys didn't film this in egypt this is in like nevada i can right. tell yes <laughs> oh man yeah but this guy as a kid I, again you were taken out of your seat and you really felt like you were, you were taken there mm-hmm. they do such a good job with it um Huh? You put. I'm um, looking at. I'm um, oh, stealing. The, I'm looking at your notes. You never let oh, me see I, them. But I'm the warden and the scarab beetle. Okay, so guys, whenever I watch this movie, after oh, I got done watching it, scarab beetles were my number one biggest fear. <laughs> <laughs> we have a friend who's I'm, one of the smartest guys you've ever met who's terrified of piranhas. So that's like something you'd never see. What's more rare than that? Probably freaking scarab beetles. Do Listen, they exist? I don't know, but it scared the shit out of me after I watched these movies. Because I mean, I also this was also around the time whenever uh, whenever this movie came out. Like we were studying uh, Egypt in my social studies class, and I was completely enamored by it. Like I love Egypt history. And so when I heard about scarab beetles then, so now to see him portray on the screen yeah. was even scarier. <laughs> this so, damn movie had people believing that if a thousand scarab beetles, beetles get on you, they can eat you in like four seconds. Yeah. That's what this damn movie made people think. I know they're coming for me. Man. <laughs> I know it was oh, it was terrible. God. But yeah, that was, that's the thing that always just stuck with me whenever the warden opened up his shirt and you just see underneath like the ball and you know that the scarab beetle and then he goes to from his neck to his face and it just disappears. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Well, the scene at the end is probably most, for me is one of the most memorable ones when Benny, Benny. Gets, Benny gets left behind stuck in the tomb oh. because he was being greedy and he could have left. Right. And he was all shush bug, shush bug. And they mm-hmm. just attack and the screen goes dark. So great. Yeah. I mean, it, you knew it something that this movie did really well too is that 
you know, the the director was like, you know, we don't want it to be gory. Yeah. And so they really played around with those scenes where you knew exactly what was happening without it being obnoxiously no, really bloody. bloody. Yeah. Obnoxiously bloody. It was still gory. scary too. Exactly. And I and I kind of I don't feel like that's like a thing anymore with movies anymore because yeah. they're just like, oh, this actually happens. You know, here's all the blood and gore, and here's just all of it. But I think they in that in, in the mummy especially. They did they did everything so eloquently <clears throat> with how they portrayed everything. Even whenever um, the mummy goes and gets one of the guys that had um, his uh, the, the, jars. the jars, the sacred jars have his organs in them. I think yes, yeah, they have their organs in it. But uh, he, one of the guys, like you just see his shadow. Ray, yeah, his shadow gets lifted his body gets lifted off the ground you see a shadow get mm -hmm. it, he gets his body gets sucked up and drained right but i mean you don't see any of it you just see the hints of it but you know exactly what's going on you don't need all that extra stuff yeah. to know what's going on see that was terrifying for me as me and my friends as kids whenever the first american gets it who, who took the uh, one of the jars he takes his tongue he takes his eyes mm -hmm. and he comes back for the rest we don't that is terrifying yeah um, that was scary it was scary as hell that's one thing that the filmmakers here did really well is that they they found they caught lightning in a bottle and that they found the perfect balance between um horror comedy and adventure and mm -hmm. that's a hard balance to run man it really it's it is really hard like they, it was i feel like this movie is just magic i mean we might be playing it up too much but after watching it like i wanted to watch it again yeah like, i was like i this whole series idea i was like man we just got to talk about the mummy and i even posted it on twitter like i'm gonna do a review on the mummy and no one can stop me i got so many likes on my you twitter were asking me hey, is your girl gonna do the mummy i know <laughs> and so i was like okay i was like yeah so we got to talk about these movies that you know other that people just you know we enjoyed watching back in the day and see like watch it and does see it if it still, still does it still slap we got to make that determination you know just the two of us <laughs> My opinion, but, hell yes, this movie does still slap. Oh, it still slaps so hard. It's so good. I freaking love this movie so much. It's so we watched it on. It was on one of the HBOs Thursday. I think. No, I have it. Oh, you have it. Oh yeah, we watched it because you had, you had gotten it for that reason. Yeah, that's right. No, I've had this movie for a while. Why? Why are we really watching it now? I don't know. We just because Corona. Uh -huh. Anyways, but yeah, so we watched it Thursday, and we waited to like you know get get our ducks in a row on what we wanted to talk about and then um i was like you know i almost want to watch it again before we do the review again it, that to me rewatchability is so important when yeah. it comes to you know movies that we're going to be talking about possibly if, you know depending on how the video does and feedback that we get and yeah. see if we keep doing this you know rewatchability is so important so it really is there's certain movies that when they come on you sit down and watch them especially if you're you know, you're somebody who like grew up with HBO or Showtime having it, being fortunate enough to have that. Yeah. They always showed the same movies over and over again. Certain movies that come to mind, like, you know, the Shawshank Redemption, even on basic cable, every single time that movie comes on. Oh my God, that movie's on like every week because almost. Because it keeps getting high ratings. That's the only movie that came on Spike TV for men and Lifetime. It came yeah. on both networks and TNT. I mean, it was one of those movies that it was everywhere because it kept getting higher ratings. The Mummy, too. When The Mummy came on um, TNT, they they went TNT went through a period where they would show it like every freaking weekend, and there was even a news article about it. Why do they keep doing it? Because people keep watching it. Yeah, you like know? me. Yeah, you were one of them. <laughs> you were one of them in the two thousands that was that was sitting there watching. I it. I love rewatching movies, hundred percent. Like uh, I, some movies, you can't do that though. It's just like a drain. You can't. There's yeah. some movies that I like and respect. I'm not gonna watch again. I'm not gonna watch Grave of the Fireflies ever again. Yeah. But. <laughs> it's still a good movie though but yeah it, yeah well th those are depressing ass movies like we're talking about the mummy well there's certain adventure films too that were like yeah that was fun but i'm not in a rush to see it again this movie if it comes on tonight if, we, if we're flicking through the channels and it's on hbo we're gonna watch it yeah <laughs> for sure 100 percent. yeah all right so our determination the mummy 1999 starting brendan frazier rachel wise john hannah still slaps oh yeah still slaps <laughs> i love I want to find people who haven't seen it and watch it with them. That's always fun to do, man. Yeah. Is seeing people's reaction to movies you have, um, they, that you love. That you and... grew up watching that they haven't mm -hmm. seen. And the older, the better, man. It's it's hard to find somebody over 30 that hasn't seen 99 Mummy. And if you're out there, reach out to me. 
because I'm gonna. I want. It doesn't you to, matter where you are, Miguel. If will you're come in, to you. If you're in Hawaii, we'll we'll uh, we'll. Oh, Hawaii! I'm not gonna go to Hawaii, <laughs> but you can like feel free to like stream yourself watching it on Twitch or something, and I'll watch. It. Yeah, well, I'll be on Twitch. We can watch it. Oh my god, that'd be so much. Yeah, fun. man, holler at your peeps who have not seen the Mummy and get them to watch it, man, because that's an experience scene. Yeah, and if you don't like the Mummy, let us know so that way we can argue with you about it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think I have anything else to say about yeah. it. Do you? You good? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening and hanging out with us. Um, I mean, if y'all if y'all like this, we can keep doing it. We can bring up other movies. Um, something that's at least been out for 10, 10 years, I would say. It has to. Yeah. If I'm gonna say, is it does it still slap? I don't want to do anything that's um younger than ten years. Yeah. I want to see. Do the, we can do the Dark Knight. Twelve years yesterday really was it 12 years yesterday 12 years yesterday what are, i want to meet people who were talking to who haven't seen the first independence day like what uh i what? don't know god almighty like where have you been anyways but yeah so if there's anything that you uh have a suggestion on that we should see uh and do a review on let us know um and let us know if you like the mummy or not in the comments so i don't have anything else to say about it this movie still slaps thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you again next time